What's up guys, welcome back to Polygon Academy. My name is Tim, and uh, in this video, we're gonna be talking about what to do when you fail as an artist. When you're first starting out on your journey as an artist, uh, whether it's in the game industry or you know a concept artist or in film or even as a uh, traditional like uh, 2D or you know mixed media artist, uh, it's pretty easy to feel like you've failed when you first try to learn something, whether it's a new software, a new technique, uh, or a new skill set. Um, chances are, when you produce something for the first time, it's not going to look the way that you wanted it to, and uh, you're going to probably have a sense of fit, like a feeling of failure or ang be angry. Um, and I'm here to tell you, as, even as a professional artist for 11 years in the game industry, um, that still happens to me. So it's, it's totally normal. Uh, a failure and having to redo stuff or figure things out is something I deal with on a weekly and monthly basis. And I don't think it's ever actually gonna go away because if you're failing at something, it means you're probably learning something new, which is actually a good thing. So in this video, I'm gonna lay out three kind of mindset shifts that I use uh, to put that feeling in its place and allows me to just kind of move on and uh, tackle those challenges with a, a positive mindset and get on with my day and hopefully get on with the project. So let's dive right into it. So the first piece of advice would be the first time you attempt anything, it's probably going to suck. And uh, the faster you can just accept that and move on and get your hands dirty and dive right in, uh, the better. Because I know for me, like the first time I try almost anything, it probably doesn't turn out the way I want it. Maybe I might be pleasantly surprised, and uh, you might be too. And if, if you try and tackle something, uh, and you're like, oh man, I, I don't know if I can do this, uh, you might actually be happily surprised with the results. So you'll never know if you don't get started. So dive right in and just get your hands dirty and dive right into it and just accept that. Like it might not turn out the way that I want it, but at least you've tried. And uh, that's a huge first step in getting better as an artist. So just get to work and don't even worry about failing. So point number two, this would be patience. Uh, this is a huge one. Um, a lot of people when they first start out, they're really impatient to get their art finished, their scene finished, the character finished. Uh, that concept art painting done. They just want it like to you know be perfect, get it done, and that rarely happens. Um, so what I would say is have patience and think of it as you're investing the time in building a skill set rather than you're just trying to get something done. Um, even if you have to go back to the drawing bo drawing board a couple times, uh, it's well worth it a lot of the time to go back and revise your work uh, and, because you're just putting more and more time into developing those core skills. So it doesn't matter if you're outputting 50 concepts if they all suck. Uh, I would rather have one or two or three really good like pieces of art, uh, maybe two or three good environments or two or three good characters, than 50, you know, half-assed kind of. Oh, they're kind of okay, uh, but sort of, you know. I, I was really eager to get to the next one, um, and or I'll, I'll go back and fix those ones later. But uh, that's a big mistake a lot of like students have. I find is that you'll give them a bunch of critiques and then they'll be like. Oh, cool! Thanks for the advice. I really—it's it's super handy. Uh, but I'll use it on my next scene uh, instead of going back and investing that extra little 20% of time that, to take something that they've already, you know, maybe spent 100 hours on. So it, maybe if they spend eight more hours on it, it could be like twice as good than it actually is right now. So that would be be patient. Uh, this takes a long time to develop your core skill set as an artist and get good at whatever you're wanting to do. So I know a lot of students—they think, oh, uh, you know two years of art school and then I'll get a job right away. And uh, a lot of times it doesn't work out like that and they feel like they're, they failed. Uh, and I can tell you that most students that I see apply to studios, um, they probably aren't good enough to get into the industry right away out of school. And that's totally fine because it's giving you an opportunity to, to, to taste everything and uh, get a good head start on learning all those fundamental skills. Now that you've acquired those skills, you can actually put them into use in producing art that is really, really high quality. Um, so yeah, have some patience. It's, it's gonna take a while. And uh, that's a, a big, big piece of advice that I can't stress enough. As maybe a junior artist or an art student, uh, it's really important to have patience because I've seen a lot of uh, you know, entry level people, they, they kind of tend to, to rush because they wanna prove themselves. Uh, and they think they have to be super, super fast. Um, and speed actually just comes with time and experience. Like a lot of senior artists, you might look at them and be like, oh my God, they're so fast. I have to get to that level. And you will with a few years worth of actual work experience. Um, I can tell you as you know, someone who has worked with people coming, new people coming to studios and stuff like that, uh, I would rather have you take a little bit more time and really polish the asset so it, it looks good in the, the whole context of the game, whether it's a character, an environment, a prop or something like that. 
And uh, as a junior, you will be given a lot of time um, to work on something, and that's totally cool. Your, your managers, producers, anyone in the industry, they, they, they know that you're you know, new and you're probably still developing those skills. Uh, you, you probably caught their eye and they, they think you're a good artist, and they want you to produce good art. So in that case, take the time to do it and, and don't feel the need to rush to try and prove yourself because that's a big junior mistake is to sacrifice quality to get it done faster. And uh, that's, that's not the way to go about it. All right, and the third point, uh, this ties back into that last video where I was talking about how I had to redo my trees multiple times, um, is try not to end your work session on a low note. Uh, you know, a point where you're feeling like, oh, this is, this is so hard. Uh, and then that way you'll be dreading coming back to it the next day. Uh, I can tell you this for experience. Um, there's been, you know, days where I've, I've left the studio and just been like, oh man, I don't want to go back in and work on that tomorrow because I'm struggling with it. Uh, so with those trees, I actually, I looked at my, you know, my watch. I was like, okay, I got 30 minutes before bed. What can I do to, to end this on a, on a high note? Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to sculpt the bark texture because I know I can quickly do a first pass on that. I enjoy sculpting. Um, and it's something that I can leave uh, at a point where I'm excited to come back to it the next day. So I sat down, I sculpted out that tiling bark texture and I was like, okay, uh, yeah, this is actually working, cool. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna UV it, and then my tree will always you know, be on track to be awesome. Um, so yeah, always try and end your work session on a high note. I know a lot of writers, they'll, they'll stop writing, uh, I think it was like Hemingway or something that was like, I, he stopped writing mid-sentence so the next day when he came back to the typewriter, he was already hot to go. He's like, okay, I know how that sentence was gonna finish. And he just kind of grabs that momentum and, and goes with it. Um, so yeah, avoid it all possible ending on a low note because then you can start to build that negative momentum where you just don't wanna get back into the project or you're dreading it and you're sitting there like, oh I, man, those bushes, those trees, those rocks, uh, I just, I, I can't get them. Uh, so do you know something, something fun at the end of your work day um, that you kind of can get that positive momentum and come back to it even stronger in the next work session. So question time, what was the last time you felt like you failed as an artist or a creative on one of your projects and how did you move past it? I'm super excited to you know, read all your guys' feedback and I'm really interested to know. So let me know below and as always, see you in the next video.